pray is early in the morning because you already set the tone. Why did God say that he hid from us? We have to seek him. We have to seek, seek. He said, I hide myself. Even with David, he kept saying, you hide yourself from me. Even with us, he hid himself. I hid myself. Come on, why? Because I want you to seek. How do you seek? He said, if you ask, I'll give it to you. If you seek, you will find me. If you knock, I'll open unto you. He hide from you that you may be able to find him. It's not more like a hide and seek, but when you tap in, he's not just there. That's why when you pray, it takes at least an hour to really tap into the heavenly heavens. Amen? You have the inner court. You have the outer court. And you also have the holies of holies. That's when now you in the outer court, in the inner court, you're in the flesh. You haven't even tapped in it. You're just in the flesh. You're asking. Asking for things. The spirit have not even pulled you in it. Look at it. He said, you ask. And then you see. When you see now is when you know you're tapping in. You start feeling the presence of God coming up on you. You start crying. And you start seeking. And you start telling how much you love him. How much I cannot do without you. So right away now you start inviting the Holy Spirit to come in to help you. So you invite him, and when you tap in now, the next stage you tap into now, he said, if you knock, I'll open. That doesn't necessarily mean the door. It doesn't mean the door when you knock. You're talking about his heart. And now you're seeking, you're touching his heart. The anointing is flowing. He's hearing you. It smells good in his nostril. He said, my God, my daughter is praying. My son is praying. I gotta go see about them now. And then comes the third thing that you tap in. Guess what he do? He pulls you in. Now at this point, you are not praying anymore. It's the Holy Spirit that took over now and interceded for you and tell you what you need to pray for. Come now the Spirit, you're not in the flesh anymore. The Bible says flesh cannot please God. Tap into that prayer, practice it. Give him an hour. You said, I can't pray for an hour. Yes, you can. Before you know the hour is gone, the more you pray, the more the flesh dies. It's no longer you, it's him now. The Spirit that's within you start activating. And that's when you pray effectively. Prayer has an amazing power. Anything you want from God is through prayer. Amen? Amen. It's all a process of waiting. Prayer is waiting on God. So we never ever give up. The moment you give up, that's when the enemy comes in. Did you know that when we pray, it empowers the Holy Spirit. It strengthens your angels. You give them power because God gave the angels authority here on earth, remember, to help us. So we have to give the angels authority to do what they need to do. So that's why when you pray, it's always important to say to your angels, go. Go and do according to what God says for me. But the more you pray, is the more you strengthen them. They always have God for you. The enemy is always fighting. But the more you pray, you may see God, the more they can fight for you. The more you're giving them authority to fight for you. The less you pray, the weaker they get. And that's when things come in. And that's when sin comes in. The minute Adam sinned, when God had a relationship with Adam, remember? He would come in the noon of the day and fellowship with Adam. But why did Adam call to him? He hid himself. Why? Because he sinned. He stopped praying. He messed up, so he stopped Pray. It's the same thing when we stop praying. Sin comes in. You wonder why things are happening because you're not praying like you used to. You slow down because trials of this world, things are going on. It's too much. You stop instead of keep pressing. And even sometimes when you cannot pray, the Holy Spirit will intercede for you. Just keep pressing. God just want to see you keep pressing and pressing because perseverance is what's going to bring the answer. Even Peter, as powerful as he is, he has to crucify his flesh daily. The enemy knows us more than we know even ourselves. Remember, he knows the word. He was with God. Come on, somebody. So if we don't study the word and we don't pray, he knows it. So he has an advantage over us. But he does not have the power that we have when we started to pray. The enemy is strong. Don't get me wrong. But we are stronger through prayer. Yes, I'm not saying we are much stronger through God's prayer. Are you hearing me? Yes. So that means that's why God said He cannot defeat you, but you have to keep praying. Pray without what? 
season. My God, my God. Why would he say that? If it's not that important, why would he say that? Remember when Jesus came on the scene? He said to the disciples, I'm going to send you a comforter, the Holy Spirit. Yes. That's a promise. How long did they stay praying for before the Holy Spirit came? Ten days. So even after Jesus left, the Holy Spirit did not come immediately. But they had to wait and fast and pray until it manifested. It's the same thing. When God promised you life, he promised you abundance. He promised to take care of your families. He promised to give you good health. We still have to pray for it and cover ourselves and continue to press because you are agreeing with God for what he had promised you. You said, I'm not giving up. So they waited 10 days after that. They kept praying. And did the Holy Spirit just show up just like that? No. At what time did the Holy Spirit show up? When they were what? Praying. Don't wait until it's too late. That's when you start praying. Praying out now. Keep the gate shut. It's time for us to stand up and fight. Don't be discouraged. I don't care what it seems like. Don't give up. Do not give up. Wake up and pray. Before you go to your bed, pray. Cover your children under the blood. Cover your finances under your blood. Take back what the enemy has stolen from you. Said, I've been going through this for a very long time. But God, I'm not coming in the flesh anymore. I want to tap in to the holies of holies. I'm tired of being on the outer course. I'm tired of praying on the intercourse. I want to feel what you feel. I want you to pull me in. I want to feel your presence. When I get out of that prayer, I want to feel like a breakthrough. We have to get back to that place. It's not just for me. It's for everyone. We have to tap into the holies of holies. Three. The outer inner and the holies of holies. That's where God is at. There is the mercy seat. Everything is in behind the holies of holies. No man can enter except the priest. What's on the mercy seat is when the priest go in and he put the blood when he sacrificed for the sins of the people on the mercy seat. This is what you read. He says that we don't ask for mercy anymore. We just take God for granted. Nobody's crying out to God, Lord, have mercy upon me, Lord. I've sinned. Have mercy, Jesus. I come before you. Have mercy upon me. Have mercy. Everybody just come to God as if it's just, it's nothing. You're in the flesh. The only prayer that God answers for sinners is repentance. He said the only prayer he answers is when they come to him to repent. But he said, pray for righteous of they much. So if we don't pray daily, we're not communicating with him. You're lying. You don't have a relationship with him. You may know him somewhat. We may know of him, but we don't really know him. Let's go to Luke 11, 13. If people on earth, be call them sinful. Your father, your mother, your family, whoever. If they know how to give you, they know what you like. What more can your father give to you? Only if you ask. But you have to ask what? In faith. So when God promises you something, always, always prayer fulfill the promises of God. Always remember that prayer fulfills the promises of God. God will mind you enjoy life, but put him first. Give him his time. And then whatever you do, that's on you. As long as he gets the first of everything, your time, your money, your, your family, everything. Amen? Amen. Go to Acts 6 verse 1. He's saying that we need to stay focused on prayer. And teaching the word because we cannot interrupt God's plan right here. We cannot stop praying. We cannot stop fasting. We cannot stop teaching the word to help the poor, even though it's very important. Do you understand? So right now they're saying that prayer is more important right now than even giving out the food to the poor. This is from God. We have to communicate with Him on a daily basis. Do you understand? I mean, spending time with Him. So you need to take care of that and let us take care of this. That's how important prayer is. It comes before your family. It comes before your job. It comes before even your life. Prayer comes before everything. Let's use a car for an example. And it's winter time. And you haven't started your car up for a minute. What happens?
has to do it. The battery went. The battery dies. It has to be charged up. You left your cell phone for days without charging. Guess what? There's nothing, no power. It's the same thing with God. If you left even for a couple of days, you haven't been, imagine weeks. You haven't been intimate with him. You haven't touched him. You haven't talked to him. Guess what? It's like the batteries just keep dying and dying and dying each day. So it don't take you that long to tap into the hopings of hope. Come on, somebody. Yeah. When you charge up, you pray, you have that communication with God. You know that time. You know you have that power, that communication with him, that fire that shut up in your bone. So when anything comes up the next day, you know you're ready, you are ready, you're quick, you don't have to like. <laughs> <laughs> watching our greater power international ministries youtube channel please subscribe to our channel so you won't miss a single video and please share with family and friends you can also join us live on periscope every sunday and follow us on social media the links are listed below in the description if this ministry has impacted you, please support us with your giving. If you would like to become a member of our ministry, please contact us at fellowship at greaterpowerintlministries.org or you can call us at 470-535-2455. Thank you again for watching. God bless you.